I want pie. Yeah. Welcome back to All Baking Bootcamp, your crash course in healthier baking. With each episode, we are recreating one of your favorite classic desserts, but with healthier ingredients. Today we're making blueberry pie, because who doesn't love pie? Here we have the original recipe, which we're going to recreate without white flour, butter, or refined sugars. Should we give it a try? Yeah, let's do it. This is always my favorite time. A good pie, you want a flaky crust as well as a nice sweet filling. The key word here is flaky, which is usually indicative of butter. So needless to say, we've got a lot of work cut out for us today. You can tell this has a lot of sugar because they're actually granulated chunks of sugar on the top. Taste the butter. Mm -hmm. The filling's quite sticky. Feels like the filling has either a lot of starch or maybe even a little bit of gelatin to hold it together because mm -hmm. it's slicing so rigidly. I want some real chunks of fresh blueberries in there. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would really elevate this. I feel like part of the blueberry pie experience is that the filling gushes out a little bit. You I want a little messy. Totally. Yeah. yeah, and it's always fun to kind of dig in there yeah. and get some good stuff. All right, I think we can do this. Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right, now let's make our version of blueberry pie. Our version is grain-free, refined sugar-free, and dairy-free, which could be a challenge, but I think you're all going to enjoy it. So first, let's start with the crust. This is a pre-baked crust, so we have to bake it before we put the filling in, and then once again after the filling is in. We're gonna use this crust recipe for both the bottom as well as the top. So let's start with some coconut flour. Coconut flour we use a ton on this show, and if you want to hear more about it, head over to our chocolate chip cookie episode. Coconut flour does have a slightly drying quality on the end result, so you want to make sure that there's moisture in this crust dough, and you also want to make sure that you don't add as much like regular flour as you usually would. We love using coconut flour because it is nut-free and grain-free, and it's also super high in nutrients and has a great nutty flavor. Second, we're gonna add in hazelnut flour. So hazelnut flour is made from whole hazelnuts. And as you can see, it has a beautiful color and it also adds this richness and depth to the crust that I really like. It kind of feels like graham cracker crust. Mm. You can always substitute the hazelnut flour with almond flour if you want. It is a little expensive, but I do think it adds like a really good taste and texture. Hazelnuts are also full of nutrition. They have vitamin E, which is an antioxidant, and we're gonna get back to that later in this, later in this <laughs> show. And it's full of protein, fiber and monounsaturated fat. So not only does it lend a lot of flavor and texture, but it's also going to give us some nutrition. Next, we're gonna go with tapioca starch. So tapioca starch is also sometimes labeled as tapioca flour, but it is not the same as instant tapioca or cassava flour. It is made from the root of cassava, which is also known as yuca. It's flavorless, so it's great for both sweet and savory methods. In baking specifically, it's really nice to help lighten the texture of flour-based goods, such as cookies, cake, or pie crust. And especially for gluten-free baking, it's really useful because it acts as a binder, helping keep the structure of your goods when there's no gluten matrix to hold everything together. Tapioca is also a starch that is super high in fiber, so we're getting some nutrition from this too. Next, we're gonna add a little bit of salt, just for some flavor, as well as some coconut sugar. Coconut palm sugar is super delicious because it has that nice like brown sugar quality, so it'll add a little depth and complexity to our pie crust. As with all of our recipes, we don't use any refined sugars. So what I love about coconut sugar in particular is that in addition to its sweet flavor, it has inulin, which is a prebiotic. We've talked about this before, but prebiotics are food for the good bacteria, the probiotics in our gut. Next, we're gonna go with coconut oil. So as you can see, this is solid. It's important that the fat or oil that you're using in this recipe is solid because you're essentially coating the oil in little bits of flour, in this case, a grain-free flour, but still a flour nonetheless, until it becomes pliable to work with. If you've read any pie recipe online, you see that there's always ice water involved or cold butter or slicing butter in. 
That way, the solid fat incorporates into the crust more slowly and it doesn't become really sticky when you're trying to work with it and it doesn't become too brittle so you can't actually shape the dough. So first we're going to put on the lid and pulse this a few times until we get some little crumbles in there. That looks pretty good. Some good crumbles in there. Good crumbles. All right. And now we're gonna add two organic large eggs. Eggs are a really helpful emulsifier in this scenario. It helps kind of bind everything and hold everything together, especially since we don't have gluten in this recipe. I'm cracking these right over the bowl, which is a little dangerous because you might get a shell in there, <laughs> but it's, it's probably safer to crack them in a bowl first and then pour them in. We're gonna keep pulsing until this kind of comes into a ball. Oh, it's really coming together. Looking good. Yeah. I think this looks good. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. I think All it's right. ready to go. Two pieces of parchment. One for the bottom, one for the top. So if you want to scoop out, I think a third-ish. Does that look good? Yeah, I think that's good. All right. So I'm going to shape this together. Get it kind of into like a hockey puck formation. Then you're gonna put another piece of parchment on top and we're gonna roll it out with the rolling pin. You don't have to worry about the crumbs on the edges because we're gonna use a nice circular bottom from the pie pan to cut around and make a nice perfect circle. That right. looks great. That looks pretty good. I have a pie pan with a removal crust, but you can also just put a regular pie pan. So now that you have that, you're just gonna cut around it and remove all this excess. All this stuff can be reused, so you can just dump it back. Perfect. Since this is already on parchment, it's a pretty easy transfer mm. right into your sheet tray. And this is going in the oven at 375 for about 10 minutes until it's nice and golden brown. And next let's do our pie bottom crust. This essentially you kind of have to do by hand and it does get a little messy, but that's the joy of life. I like to start with the bottom and you can kind of just compress it with the palm of your hand. It's not gonna be perfect and I don't really think it needs to be. So as you're moving to the t edges of your crust, I like to just kind of keep squishing, getting any bottom layers to the side, and also kind of forming that little lip. It's important that everything is roughly the same depth, because as it's cooking, you don't want some parts to undercook and some other parts to overcook. I think also compared with the original recipe that we tried, I personally prefer a little bit more of a rustic pie for summer. It yeah. just feels fresher, especially when the fruit is in season. Uh, so while it's important for the crust to be even, I don't think it has to be perfect. I kind of like it better that way. Yeah, and that way you don't have to worry so much yeah. about it. <laughs> it definitely makes <laughs> it easier crust. to say it's rustic. <laughs> Your bottom pie crust bakes for about 20 minutes, so when we go put it in the oven, we can also pull out our pie top, which has been in the oven for about 10 minutes. You are gonna wanna poke some holes with a fork at the bottom of this pie crust, just like any other pie crust, so that steam can escape while it's baking. All right. Blueberries are the star of this recipe and for good reason. Not only are they delicious, especially right now because they're in season, super juicy and plump, but also because they're the king of antioxidants. We eat processed foods, are exposed to air pollution or cigarette smoke, or even our own bodily functions produce free radicals. And what these free radicals do is they contribute to the aging process. They also can be inflammatory and carcinogenic, which we don't want. And antioxidants basically scavenge around your body and scoop up those free radicals. So they're super good for you. That's why blueberries are called a super fruit. <laughs> and they're delicious. Right now mm. they're super sweet, but if you want 
make blueberry pie at a different time of the year, you totally can. Just get some frozen blueberries and be aware that when you do cook them down, which we'll do in a second, they emit a little bit more water, so you might wanna adjust the starch or whatever thickener you're using, but we'll get to that in a second. down with a little bit of water just so that the blueberries don't burn at the bottom of the pot. Next, we're gonna let it cook for about 10 or so minutes and you'll see that the blueberries will burst and start giving off its juice and giving you that beautiful purple color. Mm. Once you see a lot of that liquid in the pot, you're gonna add a nice quarter cup of honey. Honey is a natural emulsifier and it's also twice as sweet as regular table sugar. So whenever you're subbing it out in a recipe, you wanna use about half of what the sugar content originally was. Honey is also full of vitamins and minerals, so like all the other sugars that we use in this show, it has an added health benefit in addition to its sweetness. As you can see, there's a lot of liquid in this pot right now, so we wanna thicken that up so that when we cut into the blueberry pie later, it doesn't gush out everywhere, it just gushes out slightly. So we're gonna do a tablespoon of tapioca starch and mix it well in some water. You wanna make sure that you make this slurry first instead of adding the tapioca straight into the mixture or else it'll clump and get kinda gross. All right, now that we've finished the blueberry filling, we've let it cool to room temperature and we're ready to fill our crusts. Remember, these crusts have been pre-baked, so we've got the bottom and the top ready. This looks so good. Ooh, nice color. Ooh. I love the big chunks of blueberries, because that's what we were saying we didn't like about the original recipe. Definitely feels Softer. thick. Softer. Yeah. yeah, it feels thick like a pie filling, but also still upholds the integrity of these beautiful blueberries that we have. So because the pie crust was grain free and refined sugar free, it doesn't quite have the same properties of a regular crust where you can do the overhang, but I think this is a good enough solution. You can get a nice like pretty pie at the end. So make sure your pie crust is cooled completely or also crack when you're trying to do this. I'm just gonna gently set it on top. Beautiful. Push it a little bit just to meld it with the blueberry. And this is going back in the oven at 375 for about another 10 minutes. You're really just like resetting the crusts and the filling together. Well, here's our pie. It's cooled. As you can see, I'm touching the pan with my hands. And I think we're ready to slice. Looks delicious. Ooh, that looks so good. And you actually got a really clean scoop there. Thanks. I lost a little bit of crust. Just funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I got a, like a nicer slice this time. This looks amazing. I myself. I cannot wait. So you already know the recipe for this from our strawberry shortcake episode, but this coconut whipped cream is one of my absolute favorite things to have in the fridge. It's excellent on pies with fresh fruit or in your coffee, and it oh. has no sugar. That's awesome. None, not even one gram. Mm, that looks so good. Mm. It really tastes like blueberries. It really does. So much more than the original, in fact. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the blueberries and the hazelnuts work really well together. Mm -hmm. And the filling isn't overly messy, but it still has a nice blueberry flavor and you get the texture from the fresh blueberries. Well, that's a wrap for today. Join us next time on Alt Baking Bootcamp and make sure to tell us what you want us to make next time. Comment below. Want more Alt Baking Bootcamp? Subscribe to Well & Good's YouTube channel, like right now. might not be as easy as pie. <laughs>